okay guys this is the second lecture of mine about the plant diversity and the evolution of seed plants especially now in previous discussion we have talked about uh, the bryophytes and how the bryophytes came to exist in the land uh, from those green algae which is in previous times uh, can be found in water so we, we have seen the journey of the plant from watery environment to uh, to the um, environment to the land environment and what are the different problems that they face and how they get rid of all those problems to finally uh, present and grow uh, in land okay now uh, in this uh, particular discussion we are going to talk about the seed plants and what is the importance of seed plants and how they uh, grow in land and how they can colonize and finally make uh, this huge forest of trees okay now let us begin now <coughs> if we uh, just start from uh, our point of view about the seed bearing plants then you can say the feeding of the whole world is begin from this place because whatever we are eating as food is is something that we can only find from the seed bearing plants so that's why these seed bearing plants not only have importance in ecologically but they have importance in uh, economic place as well as importance in our life too they have a huge impact in all of our life okay now the seeds change the course of the plant evolution as we know and what is the basic difference between the seed bearing plants from the other type of plants uh, because these are uh, this this type of seed bearing plants are differing from uh, the production of the seed so these are the first type of plants who depend who, who who not only depend on the alternation of generation concept still they believe in alternation generation concept but to pro to make this uh, alternation generation much more feasible they start to produce uh, some coat around their uh, sporophytes and those coat that that they generates uh, around the sporophyte they start to 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 start to be called as seeds now the seeds are something uh, that in 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 between inside there uh, they can store their embryo for a long period of time and the seed give them the hard coat that's why this uh, this type of embryo is uh, less vulnerable to damage so this seed gives them the evolutionary advantage over other types of organ organisms that over other types of plants that that can be found in those times uh, in plant earth now the seed uh, in uh, actually enables them uh, to bear uh, to become the dominant producer in most terrestrial ecosystem and that's what we uh, can see now because all those seed bearing plants produces what we call a fruit this fruit inside what uh, the seed is kept and inside the seed it has the embryo so the basic concept of protecting the embryo by several different layers that is actually helping us uh, to gather some of the very very fine uh, things in planet earth which is the production of food and that food we can gather from these plants so depending upon the seed bearing plants other animals other organisms can grow animals like us who can feed on this plants animals like many many different types of animals which are the consumers are totally depend upon this seed so if we look at the ecosystem or the terrestrial ecosystem we can find the producer and there are consumers who are depending upon the producers and these producers are gathering the energy from sun and whenever they gathering the energy from sun and store them as chemical energy in fruits and we you, it, the consumers start to eat the, that food and finally gather that energy so that's why the importance uh, is very very um, uh, importance is several times higher uh, for this uh, seed bearing plants than the, than that of other plants now this is the first concept about this topic is they reduced uh, they reduce the gametophytes uh, of the seed plants and protected in ovules and pollen grains so what they are doing in this case they just reduce their reduce their gametophytes okay so actually as we know in in the previous cases the gametophyte in both case we have the male gametophyte and we have to have a female gametophyte in the male gametophyte we have a specialized organ which is called antheridium inside what the male gamete has been produced or the sperm is being produced and inside the female gametophyte uh, fight we are having in the archegonia in the archegonia inside the archegonia there is egg which is been produced so now in the seed bearing plants there are uh, the reduced amount of this gametophyte but instead of this making of the gametophytes they produce something else which are called ovules in case of females and pollen grains in case of males so when you talk about the seed bearing plants in male plants we are having the pollen inside what we have the uh, those sperms and we have ovules inside that we have the egg for the female plants 
okay so they start to reduce their gametophytes and they are most of them are heterospory that means uh, one type of plant is uh, cannot produce one type of spore so there are different types of plants which are producing different types of spores instead of one type of spores and they produce the ovules for female and pollen grains for for males now the gametophyte of seed plants if we look at them they develop within the walls of spores retained within tissues of the parent sporophyte if you look at the uh, look at here between the gametophyte and sporophyte relationship then you can find in case of mosses we have the gametophyte here and from the gametophyte this sporophyte emerges as we know after the fertilization takes place and this sporophyte is completely dependent upon the gam gametophyte uh, in case of this mosses in case of this bryophytes in case of pteridophytes or pterophytes we are having gametophyte and sporophyte both uh, uh, placed in, uh, independently they can stay independently though sporophyte is, domina uh, is dominating obviously but still they can stay differently okay in case of gymnosperm what we have uh, uh, found in case of gymnosperm we are going to see then in case of gymnosperms we are having what is called the microscopic female uh, gamete inside the megakaryocyte uh, which, which is a part of the gametophyte and we are also having the microscopic male gametophytes in pollen cones which is a female pollen uh, male pollen cone which is smaller than the uh, female pollen cone okay uh, so th th that's how this these gametophytes are being produced so these things can be found in one plant but the production of these spores are different in uh, different times okay so again in case of this gymnosperm sporophyte is the dominant and it is independent but the but the gametophytes are totally dependent and if we see uh, in case of uh, the angiosperms then you can find in angiosperms too the sporophyte is there and from there we are having this uh, this region which is a separate type of organ system which we call a flower now this organ system supports the presence of ovules as well as the presence of those uh, those uh, what you can the pollen grains for for the male so in this case as we look look in case of uh, the evolution continuous evolution from this bryophytes then uh, pteridophytes then gymnosperm and to angiosperm we are simply making our uh, different organ systems in those those organ system is store those gametophytes in different amounts now in case of angiosperm which is uh, the the most uh, advanced one among all the all of these start to develop a new organ system which is called a flower and this presence of the flower that changes the course of their sexual reproduction scheme that helps them uh, for their sexual reproduction uh, quality because these flowers are pro providing not only providing them uh, those, those pores not only providing them those gametes but also they are providing uh, them to attract others uh, for their pollination purposes okay now uh, uh, there are some if you talk about the heterospory there are some rule among seed plants the seed plants evolved from uh, plants that had megasporangia so if we look for that what you what we call a megasporangia sporangium is a, a, a organ uh, inside what the spore uh, are being produced as we know now that means megasporangia is a huge sporangia inside what lots of spore are being produced okay which produce the mega spores that give rise to the female gametophytes now if you look uh, think about the microsporangia which can be found in male uh, uh, gametophytes uh, they, uh, they they gives rise to in mi mi microsporangia is talking about a male and this microsporangia gives rise to uh, the male gametophytes in case of those uh, uh, gymnosperms we can see this mega sporangia and microsporangia in case of gymnosperms now the seed plants evolve from uh, that that uh, seed plants evolve from the plants that have the micro sporangia which which means uh, they are they have to have the male so which produce microspores that give rise to the male uh, gametophyte we, we, as we have talked now if we look at uh, the ovules and the production of eggs and how it is been done if we think about those structures the specialized structure we can find in case of gymnosperms example is conifer uh, uh, pine and all these trees now if we look at them a megasporangium is looking like this so megasporangium is no, nothing but those cones uh, no, nothing but those uh, what you can say sporophylls now if we think about ferns if we think about pteridophytes then we can find we have the axis here and from from there we are having this uh, this leaves are coming out leathery leaves and these leathery leaves are uh, in back side of the leathery leaves what we are having we are having the sorus and in the sorus we are having the spor uh, spores and lots of different spores present there now this uh, spore containing uh, leaves are called sp uh, sporophylls now this sporophylls are very important components uh, for the for the ferns now what he is doing in the evolutionary course when uh, this is uh, transferring 
evolving to make something more advanced what happens all those sporophytes are arranging on themselves they arrange in such a way that they can produce one same type of structure like this these structures are called the megasporangium so what do you mean by a megasporangium or a spor uh, for, for this case the, the megasporangium is nothing but the attachment nothing but the attachment of different types of sporophylls and uh, in those sporophylls we are having different amounts of megaspores inside them which is uh, actually uh, protective in uh, and and there are protective in integuments and uh, those protective integuments actually protecting the megasporangium so this is the the structure of the megasporangium what we can find inside the spore of uh, in, in inside in in the gymnosperms and the sporangium megasporangium is uh, the uh, is the complex structure made by sporophyll uh, arrange arrangement okay now if we look at the structure clear carefully if we look at uh, this this cone this is called a cone and if you look at the structure carefully we take this uh, one of them and look for them it is made of a structure like this this is uh, the oval shaped structure and inside that what we are having we are having the megaspore which is having um, uh, the n number of new uh, chromosome and outside that we are having the megasporangium so this spore is present in the megasporangium which is having the 2n uh, chromosome number so inside this 2n megasporangium we are having the megaspore which is n and this overall megasporangium is being coated by the integument uh, structure so this integument layer is actually protecting this overall megasporangium and this megasporangium in turn is going to protect uh, the spore or megaspore so that's how all those things are done so spore uh, have a spore wall which is which which has the final uh, first uh, level of protection then we uh, have uh, the megasporangium protection then we have the integument protection so this spore is been protected in many different ways because as these plants have to stay on land that's why they need to have different uh, different types of problems like the air as a force or different physical forces which can block which, which can have uh, problems uh, for them so for for minimizing that they having uh, the different layers of arrangement like that okay so this is the structure of our unfertilized ovule so the in in turn all of the structures including this integument and as well as the spore and sporangium we call them the unfertilized ovule now when the ovule start to fertilize what we can find here it gives rise to the pollen tube now here we have the pollen grain when pollen grain attaches there pollen grain start to emerge a tube like structure it is called the pollen tube now through this pollen tube uh, those nucleus for the pollen grain will go and finally it will meet to the egg nucleus which is present here after the uh, um, uh, attachment of egg and sperm nucleus it will make the 2n uh, zygote and this 2n zygote start to develop the embryo for this uh, plant so the embryo has been produced inside uh, this uh, megaspore in inside this uh, megasporangia and uh, and inside this ovule so this ovule is the structure where the fertilized egg uh, is is there a fertilized ovule is uh, fertilized uh, what you can say uh, embryo is there now uh, this is up to the limit for a gymnosperms now if we see for the gymnosperms there are the separate organs like ovules and al uh, also uh, uh, pollen grain which has been produced but there is no seed coat there is there is no extra extra coat which is actually preventing overall structure for uh, any further type of uh, mechanical damage so in this step we are having only ovule and uh, the pollen grain generation or development but if we see for the next uh, type of generation or the production of angiosperms from gymnosperms in evolutionary history then you can find in these angiosperms they are further developed to produce the seed coat those extra coat which will finally make the seed okay so if we think for here the pollen which can be dispersed by air for animals now as we are seeing this pollen grains are there and now we can see in, in case of mosses and ferns in case of uh, up to the pteridophytes we have seen uh, their sperm are, are having that uh, the flagella because they have to swim in water so that's why they need the moisture for their reproduction purposes but in case of this gymnosperms in the very first lining they generally lack those uh, uh, 
flagella so wh what we can say from uh, looking at here that in this case they generally do not need water for their life cycle to be completed so they must need water for supporting their life because all the uh, life form needs water because the maximum part of the cell is made up with water but still for the reproduction purposes they do not need much water like they needed before now here they need to have a pollen grain uh, to make a structure of pollen grain in such a way that this pollen grains will be lighter because instead of carrying out uh, okay, carrying this pollen grain in water they need to carry this pollen grain via air so now if, if uh, we need to carry something via air we ne it, it need to be light weighted and it need to have very very tiny structure so we have a pollen grain here and if you look at the pollen grain for for them we have a structure like this. we can have a structure like that so this is the pollen grain and and from the pollen grain there are uh, some uh, fine uh, leafy parts coming out like that now this is really really light weighted so whenever air stick them th this pollen can be transferred from one place to another place now when they are trying to uh, move this pollen grain via air there must be different or different waste or a maximum num uh, number of pollen grains will be wasted and they knew that that's why they need to produce a vast amount of pollen grains a lots of amount of pollen grains for a successful reproduction it, it has been uh, concluded that uh, for each successful reproduction for each su successful fertilization they need to produce uh, a million pollen grains so that is really really uh, difficult but still they are doing uh, this in such a way now they eliminate uh, the water requirement as I have told before uh, and also this is uh, not only uh, done by the air but also by the animals they can also do it but in this case maximum uh, number of pollens are being transferred by air okay now if we look for the evolutionary advantage of seed now if, if we start to think about it that about the seed bearing plants now how this seed is being carried out and if we look at here a seed developed from the whole ovule now if we look at the structure the embryo is being produced here uh, if we if we look for the gymnosperm seed as, as we have uh, talk before this is the integument coat and inside that we have megasporangium in, in the megasporangium we have the megaspore and this megaspore after the fertilization will produce this embryo which is the 2n uh, uh, which is actually called the sporophyte because this 2n embryos start to produce the sporophyte and the sporophyte finally start to produce the gametophyte as we all know now this sporophyte embryo along with its food supply are packed in private coat now this is called a seed as we are looking at in previous cases in case of the pteridophyte up to the pteridophyte we have seen the structure of only this part so you cannot see an extra layer over the micro over the sporangia so what we are looking at the seed bearing plants like gymnosperm form gymnosperm till the angiosperms that they are not only having the me megasporangium as the final layer they are also having a simp uh, different here coat layer which is uh, made up with integument uh, coat and this integument coat uh, is coating this whole megasporangium to finally make a seed coat and it, it will make the seed for them okay inside that seed they store the embryo okay and this embryo have the capacity of making new sporophyte now that this those sporophyte will grow and finally make uh, the gametophyte now uh, this gymnosperms uh, bear naked seed as we are talking about they, are, they bear naked seeds typically on cones now if we look at the picture of this cones uh, in several years later here is the cone now in this cone what we are having so these are the seeds so if you talk about this ovule structure if you look at this cones which are uh, actually the uh, arrangement of sporophylls now this cone actually uh, uh, is made up with seeds as you can see here so these are the seeds this this gray uh, this uh, brown color portions are seeds so along with this megasporangium inside there we are having the megaspores which are which uh, after the fertilization develop into the embryo so embryo containing uh, this uh, this seed uh, so the seed is arranging such a way so seeds are naked they are not covered with something as we can see but if we if we lo look about normal uh, fruits that we start to eat like apple or uh, apple uh, for example or guava or something we eat it, it is full of the seed and a mango seed is inside and there is another external layer of coat which is surrounding the seed we, we call it uh, the, which is which is sometimes juicy for example in case of mango we call it the fruit and we have the food for the seed and we can also have uh, not not so uh, 
juicy part so in case of uh, in case of peanut we can find there is not uh, that much so it's, it will be it can be hard but still uh, we can have those uh, have those extra barrier around the seeds uh, for the angiosperms we call them uh, the really purely buried seed but in case of gymnosperms we cannot find that external layer of coat in outside the seed that's why we call them the naked seed uh, uh, we can find it typically on the cones Okay, among the gymnosperms are many well-known conifers. As we know, the cone-bearing trees. They are called the cone-bearing trees, including pine, fir, and redwood. These are the very simple examples, as we can see. Now, if we look at the gymnosperms, uh, different phylum of gymnosperms, then you can find from the uh, cycadophyta, then we have the gingophyta, then we have the gnetophyta, then we have the coniferophyta. So these are the di different uh, types of phylum: cycado, gingo, gneto, and conifer. Now, if we look at here, then you can find the pictures, and it will help you to understand. What are they? Cycadophyta. You all see uh, this kind. So you can you can see this is the stem structure. It, the, the generally, cycadophyta are not so much taller. So here there are in below, and here are the sporophyte uh, generations coming out from here. And from the cycadophyta, you can have the different cones. Now, if we look at the gingophyta, then you can find a uh, relatively long structure of gingophyta. Just look like plants. There are the proper vascular tissues is being made, as well as they they start to make these ovules and pollen grains but still they are making something that they are making cones and those cones are uh, are bearing those uh, seed and the seed are naked in the environment they are just open to the environment and whenever uh, and the fertilization takes place though uh, and 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 this in case of uh, whenever the first they need to have the fertilization they produces uh, those those megasporangium produces the egg and it remains on on, on those ovules but whenever uh, the pollen grains are being produced in microsporangia as the seed is as as this thing is naked then those microsporangia and the sperms just coming out from with air and it will enters into the ovule and then fertilizes the egg after the fertilization that whole uh, thing along with the megasporangia as well as the uh, layer of tegument uh coat uh, start to form which is called a seed now the seed remains on the cone for a long time when they that is uh, ready for for another round of thing then the seed uh, fall on the ground and there from there they produces new sporophyte ha uh, this is uh, the the third type which is called the gnetophyta if you look at the gnetophyta we can find here these are the structure of gnetophyta there are the cones so you can look at the cone structure here in this picture and this is also the structure of ovulate cones you can find here so this is the ovule of the cones and in all these cases you, you Uh, you can look at one thing pretty clearly that the cones uh, which are ovule cones uh, that means the female cones which are higher or ma mac macro size but the but uh, the male cones uh, just they are smaller they are little bit smaller because they do not need to support the growth of the embryo the support for the growth of the embryo is being provided by the ovulate cones so the ovulate cones need to be uh, need to have the longer huge structures so only the work for the male cones is to produce the sperm and when the sperm uh, is being produced the work for the male cone has been done so that's why they are not uh, mega sporophyte they are mm, microsporophyte now if we look for the cycadophyta we can see here uh, this is some example of again phylum cycadophyta uh, which is common juniper in this picture we have uh, we have here the yellow uh, volumenia uh, Uh, Volumia pine and we have Douglas fir, and here we have the uh, the Bristol uh, Bristol cone pine here and all these different pines which are a pretty good example of very strong plants. As you can see, these are very very long plants. They are having very very strong wood property in uh, in their vascular uh, system and all these things we can uh, see here. Okay. Now, if we look for the gymnosperm evolution, then you can find the fossil evidences that reveals that uh, by by the late Devonian time, the late Devonian period, they start to evolve. Some plants called the progymnosperms had begun their uh, uh, had begun to occur some adaptations that characterizes the seed plants. They start to produce their macrosporangia. They start to coat their macrosporangia to. prevent them uh, for, for for damaging to prevent them for the further damaging by the environmental stress like air force like heat like extreme pressure or something like that they, and they start to make those seed and finally they produce the seed bearing plants con con uh, concluding to produce by the ovule uh, ovule as well as mm, and the male parts and after the fertilization this oh, that ovulate cone start to grow and make uh, the seed uh, the plant with seed now if we look at this gymnosperms appear early the fossil record and uh, uh, dominated the mesozoic terrestrial ecosystem so this gymnosperms are really important 
and the gymnosperms are very important for the mesozoic terrestrial ecosystem to support the mesozoic terrestrial ecosystem now uh, these are the living seed plants can be divided into two groups nowadays one is the gymnosperms and second one is the angiosperm now the gymnosperm we have talked before they are they are also both of the plants are having uh, uh, the seed uh, seed onto them angiosperm is furthermore evolved from the gymnosperms as the gymnosperms are having only seed as their cones they have no further layering on uh, in outside the seed so they are bearing the naked seeds they are called the gymnosperms and if you look at the angiosperms they are having a uh, further layer of coat outside the cones outside the seed which is called uh, to, to finally make a pro uh, fruit like structure and in those cases the, their seed is embedded inside those structures okay if we look at the close uh, life cycle of a pine then you can find here this is the life cycle of a pine that means the life cycle of a gymnosperm now let's begin from this place again uh, here you have the sporophyte uh, and from the sporophyte suppose we from the sporophyte what we are having we are having uh, this this uh, ovule cone in inside the ovule cone there are macrosporangium in the ma uh, mag megasporangium we have the megaspore this megaspore is been produced and here in in the pollen cone uh, which is a really really not that much huge like the ovulate cone so the pollen cone are smaller inside the pollen cone there are microsporocytes and in those microsporocytes there are sperms are being produced which are having uh, those uh, wing like structures which and light weighted that that they can be transported via air now after making of this egg uh, inside this ovulate cone and making making of this uh, pollen grain inside the pollen cone this pollen grains will come and finally enters into this me megasporocyte when they enters into the megasporocyte the sperm attaches with uh, this uh, this egg which is present in megasporocyte and they fertilize themselves after the fertilize uh, so what happens in this case actually now let me say very important thing about here so whenever as you can see here uh, this is the megasporocyte in in the ovulate cone in the megasporocyte of the megaspore which is having the 2n uh, nucleus a uh, 2n uh, chromosome and we are looking about the microsporangium after inside the microsporangium it Uh, the sperm are being produced they are also 2n so if they fuse with each other they will produce a 4n that is not at all desirable we need the 2n uh, fertilized egg so what is going on in this case uh, whenever this this pollen uh, of uh, this pollen grain start to enter and uh, attach with the me megasporangium uh, with the megasporangium that what happens they start to me meiosis they start for the meiosis division this egg start to divide via the meiosis cell division and after this meiosis cell division they produces uh, so suppose we have the 2n after the meiosis they produce two two n number of uh, n number of chromosome containing nucleuses now this 2n number of single nucleuses will will pair with Uh, they 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 will uh, they will be there and here we are having uh, the egg as you can see here the female gam gametophyte and the pollen grain which is germinating from that point and whenever this pollen grain start to germinate here uh, from uh, from this case as you can see here so here is the first step so these are the steps has been given i have just do not follow there so here just look at here now in this step what we are having the female gametophyte develops within the megaspore uh, and contains two or three archegonia each with an egg now there are the egg is producing here and here we have uh, by the by the times of the egg are mature two sperm cell have developed in the pollen tube from one so when uh, the sperm goes and the sperm is going to uh, again go via the uh, meiosis and they'll divide in making the two n number of chromosome containing sperm cells inside the pollen tube and in further uh, that time in uh, in those situations the egg is start to grow and make the n number of nucleus containing egg inside the cell so two eggs now two sperm cells now they start uh, both of them are having the n number of chromosomes so this they can really um, pair with themselves they can fuse with themselves to make a fertilization of the egg is possible so after the fertilization they produce the 2n number of new sporophyte and then inside this sporophyte uh, the sporophyte uh, as you can see inside the sporophyte after the fertilization here we having the sporophyte uh, and uh, outside the sporophyte there is a seed coat which is derived from the sporophyte and the food they are present which is the megasporangium in previous situation is the food which serve and which help uh, the sporophyte to grow inside this embryo to grow okay and then what we are having the seed on the surface of ovular uh, if you look at there so they can uh, they can make uh, they can grow and finally when the seed just place on the ground the seed start to grow and make uh, 
make a proper formed tree properly formed sporophyte which is really really long uh, and which are which is having the two n number of chromosomes so now let's sum up all these things together again so here we have the male cone a uh, male cone and the female cone and female cone produces this uh, egg inside the megasporocyte and male cone produces the pollen grain and this pollen grain start to come and just attach it with uh, this megasporangium uh, via the carrying capacity of air and whenever it touch uh, with it, it it come in contact with the megasporangium it start to make a pollen tube and whenever it start to make this uh, this tube start to grow this pollen tube what happens uh, this egg which is present inside which is 2n which is having the 2n number of chromosome and also the sperm which is having the 2n number of chromosome chromosome so what happens sperm start to make the pollen tube and the sperm cells start to go through the meiosis division to produce 2n number of n number chromosome containing cell as well as the egg start to grow and divide to make 2n number uh, of chromosome containing egg cells so after this meiosis division occurred what we are having we are having two sperm cells in in those uh, in those tube in those pollen tubes and we are having the two egg present inside this megasporangium uh, area so after that those sperm those two sperms fertilize those two eggs which are uh, present in megasporangium and, and after that they will produce uh, this embryo after the fertilization they will produce the embryo having the two uh, uh, two cotyledons in the, this uh, if if we think about that so no no sorry for that so they produce uh, they just uh, fertilize these two eggs and they were they are producing they are produce the embryo which is which is a uh, something that can give rise to new sporophyte now this embryo uh, mm, is coated by uh, the extra seed coat as we are looking at here though in this case the seed is naked but still it is uh, coated by a seed coat in integument coat and inside there we are having the uh, this this uh, embryo and and uh, embryo is surrounded by the food uh, in this case the food is uh, the nothing but this uh, this megasporangium you can find in previous situations then this embryo is, is being clipped off here when the, when the seed is being planted into the uh, into uh, it is been put into the ground then it can develop into a structure of sporophyte and it produce a lo long sporophyte which is a fully functional tree fully functional pine tree in this case okay so as you can see in this sketch um, uh, picture most of the part is dominated by the sporophyte which is having the 2n uh, diploid nucleus and very few part of it is filled by the haploid cells as they have to go through the meiosis so most of the part is carried out by, by the 2n or the diploid 